Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today and give this talk entitled uh, Building a Space Ecosystem, the FILSA's Flagship Programs and Space Education Initiatives. Before I begin, let me ask you a question. Have you ever thought about how space affects our daily lives? How does Grab or Food Panda get, the, get from the restaurant to our doorsteps? And how are we able to track them real time? And remember that earthquake that happened um, earlier this week, I believe, were you able to receive alerts um, and in our cell phones? So these are all enabled through space technology. It's easier to appreciate it this way as we gain more understanding on how it actually plays an important role in the conduct of our daily lives. So now let me tell you more about how we are creating value in space for our country. I will introduce to you the Philippine Space Agency or the FILSA and our initiatives. The establishment of the Philippine Space Agency in 2019 signifies a crucial step for our country in building an integrated and sustainable national space program that will serve the country's needs, particularly in the following key development areas, namely national security and development, space research and development, hazard management and climate studies, space education and awareness, space industry capacity building, and international cooperation. Understanding space has come a long way. Now we are utilizing space, which has made most things previously thought impossible, now possible. Space has grown into an ecosystem composed of the upstream and downstream technologies and the end users that utilize the services. To put simply, upstream technology consists of the system and infrastructure and operations while the downstream is where the satellite data processing and development of products and services are integrated until it reaches the different stakeholders and end users across various sectors. So Dr. Maricor Soriano has already provided um, extensive um, set of examples um, of upstream and downstream technologies uh, especially in the context of the Stamina for Space program. So our country could benefit a lot from using space technologies. As you may know, uh, it's a mega diverse country. However, sitting in the Pacific Ring of Fire and with about 20 typhoons making landfall each year, made our country at some point the fourth most disaster prone country in the world. Hence, the identification, nurturing, and protection of its natural resources are important concerns for the country. While mitigating the high risk of increasing number of casualties and damage to infrastructure and resources from natural, resource, from natural disasters is an incessant need. The country needs sustained and effective mechanisms for faster turnaround and on-demand sensing and monitoring of its natural and built environments. We need to leverage on satellite technologies to help ensure sustainable use and protection of natural resources and more effective disaster risk management and response. Satellite technology is an important area that the Philippines should develop and invest in. We are motivated by the need to acquire satellite remote sensing data to protect and sustainably use our natural resources and be proactive in addressing our vulnerability to natural hazards. Scientific-based information is critical in serving our needs, and we contribute to this through satellite data. With downstream technology, we can develop our own products through utilizing space-borne data and space-enabled services. Ground receiving stations located across the country allow us to access space data from different satellites as also already discussed by uh, Dr. Soriano earlier. And this space data can be translated to information 
to help the stakeholders in their decision making. Being able to use and subscribe to space data is uh, one thing, uh, but it's another when we are able to produce our own data. This is the motivation why we started building satellites. We are now entering upstream in the space ecosystem where we are not just getting the data, but building satellites too, and having access to other technologies that may cascade and spin off to other that are not just limited to space. Entering upstream is a big venture. This sector deals with the scientific and technological foundation of space programs, manufacturing, and production of space infrastructure. This includes building satellite components, subsystems, systems, and integrating them or putting them together, testing them, and launching them. Therefore, this area also deals with the development and operations of rockets, spaceports, and related facilities. Participating in both downstream and now upstream secure a virtuous cycle of capability across the space value chain with an important direct benefits and spillover effect. We create value that way as we continue to build our space industry in the country. So in the Philippines, the past seven years have been eventful. So uh, Dr. Soriano shared the timeline of satellite uh, technology development. And here um, is just uh, a summary of that, focusing on the small and micro satellites that uh, we have developed in the Philippines. So starting off with uh, Diwata 1, uh, which was developed in 2014. Uh, uh, the development started in 2014. It was uh, deployed from the International Space Station in uh, April 27, 2016, and was operational for uh, about four years when, uh, in fact, the satellite was only designed to have an 18-month mission. So it uh, exceeded uh, its uh, mission lifetime and the end of life, um, or it was decommissioned uh, last year in April 7. Um, next is Diwata 2, uh, which uh, we started developing um, in 2016. As you can see in this timeline, it was launched in uh, October 29, 2018, and started its operation uh, since then and is continuously uh, operating up to now uh, as we speak. And we expect, uh, so this satellite have a five-year uh, mission lifetime, so we expect it to still be um, operational until 2023. Then we have our uh, CubeSats, the Maya series, um, starting off with uh, Maya 1, uh, which was uh, deployed in uh, August 2018. Then earlier this year, uh, we have um, Maya 2. And uh, just last month, uh, Maya 3 and 4 uh, were launched into space. And we are now excitedly uh, waiting for its deployment <clears throat> from the International Space Station. And finally, um, we started developing our next generation satellite, uh, MULA. Um, <clears throat> and just finished the first phase of its development. I'll talk more about it later. So with that, I present to you uh, the agency's flagship programs. So these are uh, mobilizing space data for uh, digital inclusion, economy and government, and building satellites as a vital component of uh, national information infrastructure. So starting off with the mobilizing space data. Um, so we have here the COVID-19 Space Data Dashboard, which is a joint effort of the FILSA, uh, dost -ASD, and the Stamina for Space Program. The dashboard provides a window to the application of satellite-derived data, such as ship traffic, air quality, water quality, and night lights in understanding the impact of COVID-19 to our natural and built environment 
And this dashboard highlights the current capability in the utilization of space data and its usefulness in supporting subsequent policymaking and formulation. Furthermore, using readily available satellite data, we can generate fish suitability maps, which is a data-driven and evidence-based approach in helping the end users find productive fishing grounds within their respective municipal waters. This is an important uh, uh, application, especially for municipalities needing a boost in their economy and those demanding a secure food source for their community. So aside from securing resources, we also maximize space data to protect our resources and people. To assess the impact of floods, uh, we generate flood extent maps from different satellite data. This can help us prioritize areas for faster response and assistance. We also use ground sensors to validate and monitor water levels in critical areas real time. We also monitor drought events, especially in regions with major crops such as rice. Um, we mobilize satellite data uh, to monitor drought development and impacts at regional scales using drought indices. This data is complemented with crop damage reports from local government units. So moving on to the second flagship program, which is on advanced satellite development. So we actually call it at FILSA, the build, build, build in space. Because um, like uh, ground infrastructure, uh, space assets is also uh, considered our, as infrastructure. So here we are building our next generation satellite. Um, we call it MULA, or the multi, which stands for uh, the multi-spectral unit uh, for land assessment, which is a small satellite with a mass of 130 kilograms, approximately 130 kilograms. Um, it will take pictures at 120 kilometer uh, wide uh, or swath with a resolution of five meters. Its primary payload <coughs> is the true color multispectral optical imager, uh, which take pictures at uh, nine different colors or nine spectral bands, ranging from visible region to near infrared region. Its secondary payloads are instruments for detecting ships and for detecting aircrafts. So uh, MULA is equipped with advanced features that can produce high daily coverage of about 127,000 square kilometers. Um, for reference, the total land area of the Philippines is about 300,000 square kilometers. So it's roughly half of the land area of the country. We can do near real time capture, which means uh, taking an image and downloading it on the same pass. Finally, it also has a propulsion system that can help maintain its orbit and avoid space debris, thereby <coughs> maintaining its nominal operations in space to continuously provide images daily. The mission of this next generation satellite is still uh, to meet the country's Earth observation needs. So for national security, the satellite can provide situation awareness and aid in assessment and monitoring of national security, air, uh, security areas on the rest of the Philippine territory. For agriculture, we can periodically generate updated maps on land use, infrastructure, road networks, and inland water resources. For disaster management, we can monitor and assess disaster events and hazard-prone areas for effective response strategies and for coastal monitoring and ocean studies, we can generate maps of critical ecosystems and provide high resolution images for detecting coastal erosion and monitoring of important activities. So what is the value of MULA satellite data? MULA can yield potentially a gain that is four times the investment cost. As basis, we use the cost of medium resolution satellite images similar to what MULA can produce. This is currently uh, uh, around 1.28 US dollars per square kilometer. 
So using this figure and at the coverage of uh, four, uh, 73,000 square kilometer uh, cloud-free um, images in a day, uh, the potential value of MULA data can reach about 171 million US dollars over the expected five-year lifetime of the satellite. This covers the Philippine territory alone. Note that the initial investment cost of MULA is projected to be about 44 um, million US dollars, which include not just the satellite itself and the know-how we gain, but also a license to manufacture succeeding satellites locally. So as a sovereign Philippine satellite, we can use MULA to take images of the other countries, which can also be offered up for commercialization opportunities. It can go around the globe approximately 15 times in a day, which will add opportunities um, to market this data or leverage in engaging with other countries. In addition, I would like to highlight that the, the license that we are gaining from building MULA. Our engineers will have their fingerprint on the satellite. So we're not just buying one, we are building one. With the development of the MULA satellite, we are not only developing our people, but we are acquiring the license to rebuild. What this entails for us is that we will then be able to build more sovereign satellite and other technologies tailored to our needs as a nation. This opens opportunities for local companies to be in the supply chain, design, manufacturing, assembly, and test of satellites and advanced technologies. Uh, finally, uh, the development of Buddha satellite provides theoretical training and hands-on training to at least 13 engineers in phase one and 16 engineers in the second phase. Um, so this, each of them uh, are assigned to at least one of the following disciplines. So I'll uh, go over this um, list here. We have a project manager, a systems engineer, a thermal engineer, a flight software <coughs> engineer, uh, somebody um, in charge on the sat uh, of the satellite attitude and orbit control and system hardware. Uh, we have a power systems engineer, mechanical analysis engineer, payload engineer. Okay. Um, we have a mechanical design engineer, another payload engineer, um, someone in charge on onboard data handling and software, um, on attitude and orbit control system software. Uh, we have a radio frequency engineer, downstream system, uh, the downstream services engineer, uh, the spacecraft operations engineer, and finally, the ground station engineer. Okay. So in fulfilling uh, the roles to operate the satellite, so it takes a lot of capacitated individuals to make this work. So to enable both the upstream and downstream space activities, uh, we need to support it with space education activities. Um, so what is the key role of space education? So space education proliferates space technology know-how and satellite product development. Space education <coughs> feeds into the upstream and downstream by pro proliferating satellite technology know-how through educational platforms such as uh, satellite uh, development, like in this case, uh, CubeSat building, um, satellite product development, so these are the images um, that we are processing from the satellite data, um, with um, training programs, technical lectures, uh, through different uh, government projects and university-led initiatives. So underpinning these activities is the importance of strengthening our capabilities and transferring knowledge. So in building space technologies, we are capacitating our country to build complex and difficult systems, which are at the core of differentiated, distinguished, and defensible products and services. The hands-on approach to building satellites equip our scientists and engineers with the necessary skills needed to advance our space technology programs. Through know-how transfer and retention mechanisms, that are built in in our programs, we can build a knowledge workforce. Through space science outreach programs, we can inspire and engage future space researchers 
scientists, and engineers. In connection with this, we are creating and enhancing a robust space education and awareness program that will spark curiosity and entice the younger generation to pursue space-related careers, which I will describe in the next few slides. Um, so um, with that in mind, we at the FILSA dedicate a division to the space science education and awareness. So this is our space education and scholarship division, uh, which has the following functions. To develop, implement, and enhance education and public awareness programs in space science technology applications, or SSDA. To pursue STEM engagement and partnerships with academic education and research institutions. Uh, provide grants and contributions in support of programs or projects relating to SSTA. And develop, implement, and enhance um, institution building and scholarship programs for local and overseas studies in SSTA-related fields. To realize all these functions, here are uh, some examples of activities we are embarking on. First is uh, by promoting research exchanges through our fellowship program called ASPIRE, which stands for Advancing Space in the Philippines, <clears throat> through innovation and research exchanges. So this will be <clears throat> implemented by the FILSA in partnership with universities across the country. So the Aspire Fellowship Program aims to directly engage experts from the academe to conduct innovative research activities with the agencies. Its goals are threefold. So first is on research and development. Uh, so we aim to advance space science and technology by combining um, university talents with in-house scientists and engineers. Second is culture. So we want to cultivate an environment that fosters scientific knowledge and cooperation. And finally, and most importantly, is the people. And that is by providing a steady stream of competent researchers through the development and enhancement of programs and facilities. So as space is a multidisciplinary ecosystem, uh, we highlight the importance of advanced studies through opportunities such as postgraduate uh, degrees enabled by partnerships between FILSA and local and foreign universities. Um, in doing so, we provide a steady stream of competent researchers and having such will enable the country to keep up with the global competitiveness in space research, thereby improving the country's standing in the international space scientific community. So the FILSA will fund and support scholars in space s and and related studies, including university-based uh, small satellite development. So these advanced studies in space s and and applications will help build a steady stream of competent researchers. Hence, uh, we are launching a scholarship program, uh, which we call the FILSA Ad Astra, which stands for Advanced Degrees for Accelerating Strategic Space R&D and Applications. So the FILSA Ad Astra program is established to enable outstanding Filipino students to pursue local or international postgraduate studies in line with the key development areas of the FILSA. The establishment of this program reinforces our commitment to develop a holistic space ecosystem for the country. We support scholars who wish to contribute to the following multidisciplinary fields, namely space industry, space engineering, space science, space diplomacy, space law and policy, and space economics. So as we build up our programs at the FILSA, I'd like to introduce uh, one of our guiding principles. This is the concept of T-shaped people and institutions. Space, like just any other scientific fields, is an interdisciplinary endeavor where we build stuff for space uh, when we need T-shaped people and institutions. So the T here is a metaphor which represents the individual's depth and breadth of skills. Having the requisite depth of skills is on, in one's field 
of expertise is denoted by the vertical bar. And acquiring a breadth of skills and ability to collaborate across disciplines with experts in other areas, as well as applying knowledge in areas of expertise other than one's own, is depicted by the horizontal bar. So, do you consider yourself a T-shaped person? Can you be capable of becoming one? Of course. Hence, we need you at Filsa, and we need you to be part of our space ecosystem. So finally, this is my last slide, so uh, I just would like to say that by sustaining and continuously developing this crucial interlinkage uh, between people, um, capabilities, and infrastructure, uh, we are confident about achieving our goal of growing and enhancing uh, endogenous space uh, capacity in the country, and as well as in promoting a robust space ecosystem. So the FILSA leverages emergent capacity in space science and technology applications in the Philippines. Um, it shall grow and expand these resources by further, further developing people, capabilities, uh, relevant infrastructure, and a conducive environment for sustainable innovation in the peaceful uses of outer space. It is important that our personnel continue to engage in targeted training activities, collaborative opportunities, and productive exchanges in scientific and technological know-how. In doing so, their valuable skills will be holistically nurtured towards further productive contributions for the country and the space ecosystem as a whole. So with that, um, I would like to uh, and by sharing our vision and mission. So at FILSA, we envision a nation bridged, uplifted, and empowered through the peaceful uses of outer space. We aim to promote and sustain a robust Philippine space ecosystem that adds and creates value in space for and from Filipinos and for the world. Thank you and a pleasant day to all.